necessary component of every eye exam is testing of intraocular pressure. Intraocular pressure, or IOP, is tissue pressure of the intraocular contents of the globe. The normal physiological range for both men and women are approximately 10 to 22 millimetres of mercury and can be affected by various risk factors. Risk factors include, but are not limited to, change in volume of the contents of the orbit or by external pressure, patient age, time of day, refraction, other health conditions such as glaucoma, high blood pressure, diabetes, medications, race and diet. As stated in an article by Murgatroyd and Bembridge in 2008, intraocular pressure must be controlled within the physiological range as it is necessary to maintain the anatomical conditions required for optimal refraction and thus vision. There are various reasons why intraocular pressure must be tested. Patients with increased pressure may be more at risk of developing glaucoma or other secondary diseases, an inability to be prescribed several drugs or have procedures done, expulsion of the global contents through surgical or traumatic opening, retinal artery occlusions and retinal ischemia, and optic nerve damage. Though there are many instruments available in measuring the pressure of the eyes, such as the Perkins tonometer, the tonneau pen, and eye care, today we'll be using the Goldman Applination tonometer. The Goldman Applination is an instrument which takes the pressure of the eyes by measuring the force required to flatten a known area of the eyes called the cornea. The Goldman Applination is also considered an industry standard and appreciated for its accuracy, reliability and provides reproducible pressure readings. To perform this, you will require a slit lamp, Goldman tonometer, applination prism, fluorescein dye, topical anesthetics, disinfectant wipes and tissues. There are a few necessary preparations required to carry out prior to performing the Goldman Applination Tonometry. First and foremost, it is crucial for the prism to be disinfected with isopropyl alcohol 70% as the prism will come in direct contact with the cornea. Please make sure that there is no residue left on the prism by using a tissue as it can potentially burn the cornea. Mount the Goldman tonometer onto the slit lamp making sure that when testing the right eye it is placed on the right side of the slit lamp and when testing the left eye it is placed on the left side. Next, confirm that the white marking point on the tonometer head is aligned with the zero marking on the measuring prism. Now, check that the calibrating dial on the tonometer is set on 10. Ensure the magnification has been set on times 10 on the slit lamp. Also, adjust the eyepiece viewed by the clinician to their respective refraction. Before we begin, it is important to clean our hand using hand sanitizer. Then we must clean the patient contact area such as slit lamp forehead and chin wrist using alcohol swabs. Patient seating is very important, not only for the comfort of the patient, but also for the accuracy of the results. Make sure the patient is sitting at the correct height, with their chin positioned on the chin rest and forehead on the headband. Adjust the patient on a slit lamp by lining the black line with lateral contours of the eye. When applying the local anesthetic and fluorescein, ensure expiry date and patient isn't allergic to the agent. Ask the patient to tilt back, gently lower the lower lid and apply the local anesthetic and fluorescein. Avoid using too much fluorescein as it can impact our results. When the prism makes contact with the patient's cornea, two semicircles of a green-yellow colour will be seen against a blue background and these are called Myers. When taking an intraocular pressure measurement, we want to aim to have the inner margins of both the Myers only just touching for the most accurate reading and we use the pressure dial to adjust this positioning. When the Myers are too far inside each other, this means your dial pressure is too high and you need to turn it down, while if the Myers appear completely separate and away from each other, Dial pressure is too low and needs to be increased. Myers are a different colour because of the uptake of the fluorescein dye and therefore having too much or not enough dye can be problematic. 
Thicker lines can be caused from an excess amount of fluorescein and overestimate pressure, while thin, there is not enough dye and this can underestimate pressure. When the prism is placed on the cornea slightly off centre, this can create mires of unequal sizes. When there's a larger mire on top, this means you're too low on the eye and you need to move up, while when the larger mire is on the bottom, this means you're too high on the eye and you need to move lower. So in short, you need to move towards the direction of the larger mire. When adjusting positioning, you need to take it away from the patient's cornea and then adjust before applanating the cornea again. You should not move the probe while it's already touching the patient's cornea as this could cause damage. To obtain the pressure reading once the mires are aligned perfectly, you need to look at the dial you are adjusting and multiply this number by 10. To record this, you write a big A and at the top is the time of day it was taken as this can have an effect. And then down the bottom on the right hand side, you write the left eye pressure and on the left, you write the right eye pressure. Thank you.